Hello and thanks for watching the Friends of the Farms lecture series. Each session is designed to deliver a small and in-depth dose of cannabis education. My name is Candace Haas and I want to thank all of our viewers and customers for joining us from the pharmacy, the pottery, and the Natural Healing Center, as well as all of our friends joining us from across the world. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified when we post future cannabis content. If you enjoyed this webinar today on home cultivation, we have other content on our channel on cannabis cultivation from Ed Rosenthal, from No-Till no Kings on No-Till and Living Soil, and also on Regenerative Farming from Bird Valley. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about home cultivation, and I'm joined by Leanne Hayward from Plant Edge. Good Plant Edge, how you going? Yeah. Plant Edge is a cannabis consumer education consultancy that Pharmacy, Pottery, and Naturally Healing Center have partnered with to deliver education to customers and patients with rave reviews. I would also like to encourage all of you guys, if you're near one of our locations or any other location where they're offered, where Plant Edge offers their classes, to take one of their free courses. They're absolutely wonderful, from modern cannabis to terpenes and testing to understanding concentrates to the class that we're going to um, take just a preview of today about cultivation. Um, it's a wonderful way to learn the basics about cannabis. A few months ago, I had the pleasure to meet Leanne and take her home cultivation course. She's a wonderful, pleasant communicator, and she's full of great, helpful knowledge. I knew that I wanted to invite her to be on our platform and to share her tips with all of you. Leanne originates from Australia and has lived all over the world, um, from Thailand um, to, you know, of course, here in America and has many fascinating stories and has picked up a lot of experience um, in her travels. She's been interested in gardening since she was very young and has been growing cannabis for over 25 years. Leanne arrived in America over five years ago, and when she came here, she started working with a medical cannabis gardener, and she worked there for over two years. Working with the master grower, she perfected her skills and applied them at a very at a larger level. Growing is an absolute passion to Leanne. She loves digging in the dirt and throwing seeds in the garden. I'm so happy to be joined by Leanne, and thank, thank her for being with me today. <laughs> thank you so much, Leanne. Hi, how are you today? Great. With planting season just around the corner, I'm looking really forward to the information that you have to share with us today. Oh, thank you so much. And as you know, like you've come to a couple of seminars, so it's always fun to chat about growing. It's one yeah, of my I, favorite things. Yeah, I love it. I love all the um the, the plants that you made for demonstration quality. I, I feel like you're I've watched a lot of you're different ready? seminars on how to grow, and I feel like yours were some of the most easy to understand. I actually learned a couple things um, that I hadn't heard before, and I feel like they were just really wonderful. And so I'm really happy to have you with me today. Well, thank you. Yeah, and it's I do. I love growing at home, but I think a lot of us, you know, we live in so many different. Whether it's you've got a big garden out the back or just a little windowsill. So anytime I've been in, and I've been in all of those accommodations. So. It, whenever I can grow, I do. And it, it's, you know, in front of a windowsill or it, if I've got 40 acres, you know, I'm, I'm throwing seeds out. And that's when seeds weren't a ridiculous amount of money. And, you know, you kind of had mason jars full of them. But, <laughs> yeah, it's it's always something I can do. And just, the, you know, the mishaps sometimes you go somewhere and you're covered with dirt. You don't realize it until someone points it out or you look in the rear of your mirror. You know, like you got a little leaf on your shoulder. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> you, know, usually, you do. They usually get stuck in the hair, too. That's the thing because you don't realize. And as you know, like I usually wear glasses, and half the time I've got no idea what, you know, and I think, oh, shivers, you know, that's, yeah. So you got to be careful of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even if you're just starting out with like one plant, growing cannabis of your own brings people a lot of joy. So that's why I'm really glad that you're here to teach, you know, people learning, you know, just to grow at home, the basics, um, some tips to have that enjoyment for themselves. No, it is fun. And she's such a pretty plant too. That's what I like about her and so responsive. And whether you've got, as you said, like one or or if you're getting really crazy and, and got your full six or, you know, maybe a little extra, I, it's, 
you know, different strains react differently. They look different even before they bud. So yeah, I think she's such a beautiful plant to work with. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Now I'm going to be the boss of the slides. Or are you going to be the boss of the slides? Yeah. I'll let you go ahead and like uh, maneuver through them. Okay. Well, as you thank you so much for that that introduction. As you said, it's uh, Leanne here, and I come from Australia. And there's a couple of uh, pictures that I had sent in there. This one up the top is, or, or sorry, down the bottom was when I was growing some beautiful crescendos there, and they're skinny little lass. So I have been um, in the dispensaries for about five years here. And as you know, California is like coming to a kid in a candy store when you like cannabis. I did not realize what was out there until about five years ago when I arrived. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's, it, it, I probably didn't even know the difference between indica and sativa, even though I've been growing a long time. So to come here and get that education was fantastic. Stick. So there's a little bit there. I'm going to, all right, forgive me with these slides. Let's see if this works. Oh, wait, there we go. No, there we went too far. Okay, so we start with wine growing at home. And, and as you know, it's sort of a miserable winter, even though it's a California winter. I'm not a fan of the, the cold at all. So I know I get a little bit of winter blue. So I always say that's the why now of, of why we're going to there. And I'm going to move closer with my contacts. I thought I was being fancy without my contacts. And now I just can't see properly. <laughs> so why you grow at home? First of all, as you know, it's fun. We like digging in the dirt. It's really good for your mental health. It's good just to get out there physically. Um, I mean, even just a little bit of sunshine today was fantastic. You know, it was like that 64 degrees and I was out there mowing the lawn just in, enjoying it. So um, I say always get out there when you can, get your fingers in the dirt. And there we go. So, oh my goodness, I wish I had not put my contacts in so I can't see a bloody thing. So here we go, darling. <laughs> Okay, and also you have to go without glasses too, Leanne. <laughs> well, I tell you, like, you know, I thought I'd just go for them, but no, I'm going to have to go with both contacts and see if I can't read. This is why I never go out to dinner with them. I can't read the bloody menu. So also <laughs> for your sustainability, as you know, like going out, it can cost a little bit. So I like to steal pots off the side of the road when I can. I make my own dirt through a little compost that I've got. So I'm always collecting my bits and pieces from the kitchen, chucking everything in there, a little bit of wet newspaper and sort of rotating it through. So I think growing at home is great for your sustainability. Growing your own medicine is fantastic. I think you get to know what goes into it. And uh, as I said, it's a really enjoyable plant. So I think doing that is the benefit of growing at home. As I said, beating those winter blues is very good for you. And right now, I think we're a little bit too early for to be growing outdoors. It's a fantastic time to start prepping and, and doing that composting and, and picking an area where you can grow. So, you know, you might have limited space on where to choose from. So I always like to save a bit of money by doing a bit of research. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. So we've got our indoor cultivation you can choose from and you have your pros and cons of your indoor cultivation i i do like growing indoors because i feel like you you've got a bit more control over everything uh it does have a bit of a cost uh to set up but i i, I like it you can you know get to go into your own private little jungle uh, you mm -hmm. know, check it out. And and uh, I think it's almost like a little secret place. I When I've had tents, I've, I've kind of just snuck in there and, you know, take a little book in there and hang out, especially in winter time. So to warm up there. So you can control your environment. You have uh, greater yields. You also can start right now, as I said. However, your cons are your startup costs your utility costs and consumption. I found that out the, the hard way when I had a uh, air conditioner going uh, full belts and my electricity bill um, quadrupled almost. So yeah, just be aware that there are some ongoing costs there. And it does have a, a very demanding maintenance. It's not something you can pop away from and, and ignore for a couple of days. So just be aware that 
that's one of the things there. So your old outdoor cultivation, your pros are that it is low cost. Um, you spend very little on your equipment. As I said, I, I was stealing pots or, you know, collecting dirt. And, and even when it's not cannabis, like I'll go around the neighborhood and make friends with people just if I can take a couple of cuttings from their plants. So it's just, you know, even then I, I find it's really cost effective. Um, you don't have to worry about your light or your wind. Uh, you have your lower maintenance. You're not having to watch it 24-7. And as we can see there, there goes my contact there. Woo, what's that bottom one there, Candace? Help me out. I'm going to fail Pure that sunshine. one. Ah, well, there you go. Okay, so we're talking about the benefits of, you know, your pure sunshine versus your indoor light. So that that's, you know, we talk about that a lot when we're doing our own medicine. Your cons are that you have very little control over that atmosphere. So if you get a big wind, you get a really hot day, you get a, you know, a, for some reason, a, a really cold day. I think it, later on in the week, it's going to be 80 something degrees. So, you know, you know just today, 80 in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, you know, when, and you can't start until later on. You possibly have a lower yield too, and you do have a lot of outdoor pests, and they, there's some nasty pests here. So, I think it's what is it that tomato caterpillar that, that gets inside the stem and just yeah, you could be picking caterpillars off daily, and depending on like where you live and what can transfer. So it can yeah, be night maintenance with pests if you're outdoor growing, if you have big enough plants and enough of them. Yeah, and they're just, I mean, it, you know, you've got to be watching it all the time. And and I found that, you know, once those turps start going, you you really attract some, I mean, I used to have kangaroos in the backyard, um, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out with the plants. I mean, thankfully, the koalas weren't into them. They're like, no, we just like getting drunk on our eucalyptus. But the kangaroos, mm -hmm. cows, I've had dogs, cats, you know, there's any animal that I've had. Is once those turps start going, they, they really want to take a little bite too, so. So just be aware there that they're it is gonna they smell good you're not the only one who's going to be interested so you've also got your different costs growing costs with your indoor costs you're going to have your uh, tents your grow mediums you're going to have all your equipment that we have listed there I think when you do have a tent it is good to have co2 going in there as well I think that really helps the plants and you need to have your your fans so you get a a good wind flow so you're emulating what's outside with your outdoor very very limited i mean the cost and if you're stealing you know pots off the side of the road or, or begging people for dirt that brings your your costs down too but i did find that i really um i use a shade cloth when i'm growing outside here especially in these conditions so maybe setting up a little area like that or a uh, what i do is i have a mobile area with a shade cloth so that helps out immensely too i love how you've enumerated here the different costs and it looks like it's about 10 times the cost to grow indoors than it is outdoors um, but I also think that's your initial cost, too. And once you sort of, you know, put all that equipment aside, your yields, I mean, you can really, when you're outdoor, you're, you're getting one, maybe two yields a year, where with your indoor, you, you can get silly, you know, you, and you can, you can stuff some good plants in there, you know, some good size ones and get some really nice. And if you've got in an area, excuse me, that's not going to be interrupted, then I, I think indoor is really the way to go it's if you've got somewhere that you know someone's going to be opening the door you've got to worry about hiding every time you know your mom comes over or something like that maybe outside on a, a mobile i used to put my plants in a um a wheelbarrow and sort of like take them around so you know the parents are coming over i could hide them or even if i was chasing the sunshine you know it was a little mm -hmm. bit easier to mm -hmm. maneuver so it's true when yeah, I think now that, you know, I, I you know, it's you can have six plants it, and I do have an area that I can set aside. I, I love having a tent and I think it's worth the cost. Yeah, I love tents, too. Um, when I lived in an apartment, we used to have one and they're they're completely uh, light, tight, airtight. Yeah. Um, 
they're pretty, I wouldn't say they're soundproof, but they do keep a lot of the sound insulated. And so you could have one in your bedroom and, you know, it doesn't really disturb you once you've gotten used no. to it. And you could have it there, not even know it's in there. Um, and you get to peek at it and have yeah, a little look. You, do, and... doesn't, you could definitely have it in your room and um, live with it and, you know, sleep with it and everything. And then just, you know, and it brings you joy and it brings you medicine and it helps save you money. Um, so it's really cool. Yeah. And yeah. All- and I do. I just like, I sort of feel like, you know, when you used to, did you ever um, uh, like have sea monkeys when you were a kid, like on the back of the Mad Magazine? Did you ever see those? I saw those, but I never had any. <laughs> yeah, and I, like, I don't think I ever had one that maybe survived a week. But I used to just love sort of like going and peeking at them and seeing what had happened. And I, I always like the windows on the tent where you could sort of roll them up and be like, hey, what's happening in there, ladies? What you doing? So, yeah, yeah I, I love to look in the tent. Yeah, I did love that. And I loved um, I loved trimming. That was one of my favorite things. But I know we'll yeah. talk about that a little bit probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll pop on to the next one there. So these are little prep and practices that I find were really beneficial for for myself. And as I said, like seeds do cost a lot. Um, I think for ten seeds, maybe one hundred twenty five dollars. Not you know, not including taxes. Really, if you're getting clones, they can be you know, between 35 to $15, depending on your dispensary, depending on how many you're buying. So that you don't really want to fuck it up, you know, like, I mean, it's expensive to, to kill them. So what I like to do is I like to, like we were talking about, scout out a little area that's not going to be interrupted, where you're not going to have to worry about, you know, changing your walkway or anything. And somewhere like you said, a cupboard or a garage or an uninterrupted area. Um, research your materials and your costs. There's so much out there. I mean, even Amazon sells tents now. So mm-hmm. you and the hydro stores are fantastic. Like going down there, having a chat to them. You know, give them your business down there instead of Amazon. Forget I even said Amazon. So <laughs> that that's um, something to do. Research your materials and your costs. Um, what have I got there? Okay, your light um, and your airtight and making it waterproof. I've heard absolute horror stories of people who have set up their tent, done a great job, done their grow, pulled the tent apart, and they've realized it hasn't been waterproof, and now they've got to replace the, the carpet or, or things like that. So just, you know, scout out your area and prep it really nicely. It will save you later on. Also, um, do your research, um, check out your budget, and practice with herbs on your windowsill in the meantime. And you you saw when I would bring my little, uh, my basil, because I think that's (laughs) a a really good one, because, um, you know, you can cut the bejesus out of it, pop it in water, it still grows a couple of roots after a week. Um, that and mint is really nice to practice with as well. And I've grown my whole entire mint garden just, from a beverage I, I had a couple of months ago where <laughs> you know, it was one of those fancy beverages with with all the mint leaves in it and I was like oh I'll take this home and um, yeah my whole garden's done up with mint leaves now I've got about six big basil bushes just from you know from beverages too so yeah practice on that and that saves a lot of money and it teaches you about um, the, the root system, you know, so you can really start to look at the roots and, and see what's going on, what, and also how, um, you know, how much light they like, like what, what, you know, you play a little bit of God with them. And if those ones die, then it's, you know, it's not too bad, you know, yeah, yeah it's not going to cost you too much. So go on to the next one. And the same is with outdoor. Um, pretty much there is what you're doing there is you're scouting an area that is not going to be interrupted as well and you see there there's grandma with the wheelbarrow because <laughs> it's such a bomb idea like it, it is it. really good and especially if you've got like you know nosy neighbors like my my neighbors are so cool but one of them's a cop and I'm just not chill with that <laughs> so it's like Maybe in his backyard <laughs> like it's his <laughs> It's like looking at his house. <laughs> yeah, you know, just like hanging up there. Outside. So this is, you know, I like to have that option of moving it around. And if you do have limited space, even indoors, you know, it's nice to be mobile enough where you can move your plant around. I, I mean, I was being a pretty, pretty, very serious plant mother if you're moving around to chase the sunshine. But, yeah, that's a good one, too. I also like, as I said, uh, making my own compost. That's uh, 
favorite thing of mine. And just also, you know, you feel like you're doing a little something, something for the earth where you're like, yeah, I'm, it's not going to landfill. I'm, I'm making my own dirt. And, and you know what's going in that dirt too. And it gives you time to learn a little bit about what is going into the soil. And really the soil is what is the most important part. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you think it's the plant at first, you think it's the leaves and, you think, oh, you know, keeping them green and it's beautiful. And then you start to learn about there's this whole, you know, keeping the, the roots beautiful and, you know, white and and gorgeous and strong and like Rapunzel hair. And then you start to realize, oh, shit, it's not even about that. It's about, you know, the really good soil, the nutrients that this plant is eating. So composting to me is, you know, when they talk about um like potassium, you know, putting like, was it bro science, you know, like put banana skins around your, your cannabis tree. Well, make them into your compost and take a little note and, and go from there as opposed to um, doing the other one. And I'm starting to shiver because it's bloody cold. I don't know if you, you were saying it's dropped like 20 degrees up there as well. Yeah. So yeah and then, and uh, the audience is giving some other suggestions that I, I feel like we have like an audience of experts that are watching us live. They oh, like this is a thing. Like I, I love this one so much. Yeah. And please can everybody know this is, I am no expert in any way. Oh, no, shape you're, or you're great too, but like other but people, this is, this is something I just love growing plants and, yeah. and they're, you know, I, I, I just like it and it's, it's fun to do. And, and I really like those seven R and, I like yeah. crafting, so. Yeah, cannabis brings, people have such passion for cannabis, you know, so as you're speaking, other people are like, yeah, we have other suggestions too. Like they're saying like earthworm castings are another way to like feed the yeah. soil. Like you're saying, like people are like now, they've discovered like if you really want to like help feed the plant, it's not about like the 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 root system. It's like, you know, feeding like the soil. They're saying yes. like earthworm castings, that like bat guano. Um, compost teas and like earth cat earth ca earth castings and stuff like that. So they're all agreeing with you, you know. Um, but it's just showing how much passion people have for the plant. Oh so. yeah, and I think we all miss playing in the dirt. Like it's really <laughs> like I loved making mud pies as a kid and like grinding up the grass and adding some tap water and you know forcing my little brother to drink you know my witch's brew or whatever the hell I was making. And I think we all. To me, that's what gardening is. And and I, I I think I sent you a couple of pictures of what I'm just pulling up in my own garden, you know, like whether it's carrots or parsley or as many herbs as possible. I'm, I'm not going to eat them all. I mean, I probably can't. I'm growing, I think, about 50, you know, uh, kale plants at the moment. I don't even fucking like kale that much, but the joy of growing <laughs> it and, and just... You know, seeing that green where it used to be a patch of dirt when I moved in, where the dogs, you know, used to roll around it. And now I'm like, yeah, there's earthworms when I dig in it. And it you know, earthworms are fantastic. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a great one. And, okay, well, I'll stop chatting, you know, go back to here. So choosing your strain also is really important. And, um, you know, there's no point growing yourself a, a nice sativa if you really like uh, smoking a good indica. I, I like my indicas in the AM and all day long so you know I'm, <laughs> you know i like growing in the coast yeah so choose something that works for you also um there's a couple of strains that are a pains in the ass to grow like i think skywalker is a little bit of a pain in the ass um you know it's a bit finicky as opposed to your uh strawberry cough which is a bit easier to grow I love growing ones that are crossed with uh, jealousy because they're such a dark green. Their uh, their leaves are nice and fat. They're like little green bullfrogs, you know, like they're just oof. So those are ones. And if you do, I find they're hard to kill too. And that, that works out for me. Okay. So, well, so choose your strain and learn about the terpenes. And as I said, be aware that, uh, other animals like terpenes. So as we know, we can bring your babies home, whether it be seeds or clones. And I like to uh, pop my seeds on sources and I like to put my clones in cups. And the, what I like to look for is with our seeds is that nice little tiger stripe. So you get a nice healthy seed. And as I said, I remember the days when I just had mason jars of seeds when you kind of be like rolling your bud on the 
on the slant so all the seeds would roll down the bottom and like oh, just sort of throw those out and hope I got more females than males. So this one's much nicer. And, you know, you can go to the store and buy some really beautiful seeds. So I recommend that a lot more. And as I said, check out for the tiger stripes. Uh, when you get your seeds home and do pop them, as I said, I like the saucer. So it's uh, so scientific. It is uh, a, paper, a wet paper towel in between uh, two saucers or two paper plates. <laughs> and uh, wait till they pop and then uh, put them into a very sh um, a shallow piece of, or you know shallow soil or grow medium do not drown them and you know put them into a, a big pot so as we talk about like going little baby stages so there's a few tips there on the, on the seeds then I think um, I'm also a big fan of your red cups here so. <laughs> It's only in America that you guys have the red cups. So I call them the teen party cups. And I <laughs> like them because they have, I, I didn't realize that it was shots or, you know, when they're sort of like, they've got like, I didn't realize that. Markers. Yes. And I was like, God damn, this is good. So, you know, I just thought they were red cups. Um, so they're excellent because they have the markers on them for your uh, teenage parties. And uh, I just fill up a little bit or I actually cut most of the, the cup off. So you've only about that, you know, can you see that there? So like half maybe or like three. Yeah. Three. You know, I like to leave a little bit tall. So if you are watering it, you're not got water spilling out everywhere. So, um, but then you can put it in there and slowly sort of build that up to normal red cup size. And that's sort of where your, your clones come in because when your clones come home, and these beautiful, I just love the roots on these ones there. So when you're, when you're purchasing your clones, you're wanting those nice white roots. You're wanting a lot of roots there. You're not wanting them all gangly or you don't want uh, curly leaves, um, no powdery mildew. So just, you know, or no pests on them. So have a little check on them or, but don't, let's just say eyeball them because the poor loves, you know, if they're in a dispensary, you don't want to be hands on with everything and, you know, because whenever I'm playing with them, I glove up because your hands, you got some stuff on your hands. So, uh, yeah. So check out those ones there. So you usually come in about five to seven inches. I think uh, teens or dispensaries are starting to sell teens now. Well, there's in the Bay Area there. I've seen some dispensaries that have like, like they'll have like clone rooms. Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, I think I have seen some like a while back and like in Orange County, I haven't really, but maybe like in the Bay Area where they have these bigger, larger Might clones be going to bigger sizes. that are some that are more mature. That's definitely a possibility. Um, I wouldn't I think, doubt it at all. I wouldn't. Doubt OK, it. I mean, I like I do like those ones because they're safer for the uh, the more amateur grower. But clones, usually you're going to be getting about five to seven inches and. They'll, they'll come in, you know, a little, uh, I wish I had one with me, a little black cup there. So, you know, they'll come in your individual ones. And I put those straight into your Magical American Red Cups uh, with a little bit of soil down the bottom. Obviously some drainage, you know, little holes poked through for drainage and just cover it up. And um, I was actually, you know, I was in... Um, was it Home Home Depot or your your Lowe's the other day? And I saw I was in for lighting, and I saw that they have these grow lights on just on the shelf, so you don't even have to get crazy and you know like get get your big LEDs or anything like that. They were just something you could have on your you know your bench top. So you know might be able to do clones on your bench top there. So there's oh there's your famous red cups. Oh sorry, go ahead. Real quick, um, the audience is saying for anybody that's watching that Dark Heart Net Nursery um, mm -hmm. in the Bay Area may have um, teen clones um, available for sale. And they're saying now I didn't know Dark Hearts was still around. I thought they'd closed up shop. Um, well, people may want to just look into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, things are always evolving and changing the cannabis industry, but um, it might be worth looking into, definitely. And maybe a place called Rax in Oakland or Purple City Genetics. Those are some leads for people if they're looking for that. Oh, nice. You know, there's some good nurseries in the L.A. area, too. There is a Rooted Crew Nursery in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Rooted Crew That's is awesome. 
yeah and also you know like they've got excellent excellent staff there so if you've got any questions or or anything along those lines those are fantastic people to to get a hold of and an excellent product that those uh that picture on the last one where is it this one back here that's their roots color so i just love you know as i said that quality because i like the higher quality um because when you bring it home you know it's it's harder to kill that's really the only reason <laughs> you know it's like you can drop your baby once that's it these ones you go okay so what we have here as i said our little red cups and and let's say that we've grown our seeds to a good red cup size and we've got our clone in in red cup size um what i like to do there is when they um get a little bit bigger and all the roots are coming out there and you go into a one gallon beforehand i'm giving them a little bit of a haircut and i think we were talking about like what i made where's my baby i made now, I know these do not look like cannabis leaves in the audience, but you try driving up and down the 405 with like giant, like they always say to Candace, I am not driving up and down the 405 with all these cannabis trees. So <laughs> I have got these ones. And um, when they get to these one gallon ones, I kind of like to give them a little topiary and a little cut because that strengthens them. It gives them more bud space. He's so nice and tidy. So I say with the, that's where you're double your efforts and you're, you're training them. And, and cannabis is really fun to train too. I don't know if you've seen the, um, um, what is it? The cannabis bonsai. Have you seen that? Oh yeah. 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 You know, and you just think like he just gets it into so many cool different shapes and doing things. So it's a really, uh, you know, it's such a cool plant, you know, you can have a bit of fun training it and, getting into the different shapes. I like to look at, to make it look like a lollipop. So, you know, so it's got this one stem going and then this is nice bushiness. And that way um, you can keep it nice and tidy down the bottom. You're not, you know, so there's not anywhere for pests to hide. And that's something, you know, and also it's just, you know, looks like a little lollipop. And, um, and as I was talking about with, um, Gloves. If you're not wearing gloves, please be aware. If you are a tobacco smoker, there is a disease that I've got no idea what the scientific name is, uh, that if you are smoking, it transfers over to cannabis. Hmm. Yeah, and it gives it a... It gives it a, um, like the leaves start to curl upwards and inwards and go a brown color. So it's something to do with the, the tobacco leaf. Very interesting. So, yeah, I keep good. that one. Well, you think, I mean, there's got to be so many, you know, you could plant diseases around. So there's something's going to be happening there. Okay, so we've got our two, four, six. So these are sort of the time frame where I like to to grow up the these plants that we're talking about from your red cup to your to your one gallon gallon plants. And the reason I like to sort of take that time, it's like um the you know, you don't want to throw your toddler in the deep end until it knows how to, you know, it can touch the ground a bit. So you're doing the same with your plant. So you're sort of easing it up into its stages. And each time that you're doing this, you can give it a good drink. Um, that's when I'm because I'm I'm a notorious overwaterer of, of cannabis. <laughs> it's so difficult. <laughs> like there's people out there like been training for years and I'm just like, oh geez, I hope this is enough. You know, what I mean I'd have like the scale, I'd be weighing. I mean, I was I was just terrible. So I, I just knew that every time I transplanted it, that was a time to really, really give it a good drink. Um and uh yeah, to, to ease it up on there. So just if you like every couple of weeks and or if it's, um, I used to wait till the roots were popping out down the bottom before I would transfer it over. So that might be another tip for people is just sort of watch your roots go in there. So we've got there, and I've got the, we're growing our own cannabis. So our, our little poles popping up here. I like this. <laughs> I was like, wait, what happened there? Okay, so that's our two, three, or two, four, six. And then our one, three, and five are just the gallon sizes. I like to to use it's it's easier and i like to the, you can get the tall 
uh, gallon ones. I sort of like the fat, flat ones. I find they're easier to, they were just easier for me to maneuver. I, I thought they dried out um, on a more even basis. So yeah, I like those ones. And you can steal them off the side of the road. Okay, so bringing up your baby from toddler to teen, you're wanting your 18 hours of sunlight. Because once you, you know, start losing, you know, we want her to get to a good size. So we want our six hours of darkness. Some people, when they have their 10, they'll talk about going for 24 hours, the light for 24 hours. But I, I think the lady needs to rest and, um, you know, she needs a little bit of darkness. So I always say your 18 hours of light, your six hours of darkness, your consistent watering. And, and please do a bit of research because I'm shit at watering. So <laughs> like, that is a good one there. And also um, she needs her feeding and those are your basic, your basic uh, nutrients that she's going to be needing and her needs change as she's going from her veg stage into her flower stage too. So be aware of it. I, I have great conversations with the fellas down at the hydro store. I, I probably took their ear off nonstop about, you know, like, what about this? What about that? Cause there's so many products available. Um, there's so many different price ranges available too. And uh, yeah, so so do check that out. But she does need feeding. And they even yeah. have like some like kits and formula, like some things for like new growers too, like where everything kind of comes like in a package and, you know, and yeah. you know, for people that don't want to use that many, you know, they, they're, I found everybody when you go down and chat to them about it, like, and when you start talking about about cannabis or even just growing plants, like people do get excited and they, and they want to help. I've never had one of the guys, you know, or the, anybody from the hydro store be like, oh. yeah. you know, like there's always, you know, you will end up with like 20 products and, you know, like what does what and what's in there. And I mean, you can, you can get crazy with them. So, but just feed her. Okay. Back in so, the day, there used to be more more stigma, but nowadays it's loosened up a lot, especially with, you know, like decriminalization moving across the country. And now they're not afraid. You could be more open with the dialogue. Would you say like you can talk about cannabis or would you say you still have to use like coding and like. No, like, no, especially like, after. And, like say cannabis when you go in. The yeah, after, especially after COVID too. I mean, we were, we were essential workers. So, yeah. you know, that, that I think really changed up the game. And I think now people realize that yeah, yeah. Cannabis can be incredibly enjoyable, um, but it's okay if your medicine is enjoyable and, and it's okay if, um, I mean, it, it's just fun. If, I mean, how the hell you might be growing hemp and, and making your own rope. So who, who's to say I, yeah. And I have always had a great chat with them and, and, uh, you know, I, I've never, never had a problem talking to him about it, you know? And I think there's a lot of places you go in now and you'll just see like on the, on their background videos, just like these beautiful nurseries and grows out there. So because back yeah, then, then it was tomatoes. We yeah. used to have to pretend. And like, I feel like nowadays we can be a lot more open about everything. Yeah. So and this there. is so great about it because there was like in, in Australia, I could not, there was very few people that I would have these great conversations with. And, and since I got into, you know, I was at the dispensary and, and I, just the funniest conversations you would get to have about cannabis and and just all the products and what did what i mean my my first class used to make his own suppositories and for like a while it's like, you know i go home and i think about it because i wasn't going to ask him directly but i'd be like how wait what like you know it just you know, so he and then he would also cut up the the shade leaves or the sun leaves and and use them in milkshakes or mm -hmm. bitter greens. So it's you know it's such a cool plant, and I think everyone's getting to that point where they want to talk about it. They're so interested in it, and uh, yeah, get down to your hydro store and, and chat to those people. And there's some good stuff on online too. So um, you know that's a good place. Too. So okay, so the change when you're going from veg to flower. Um, 
So it is very photosensitive. Uh, sensitive. Uh, so when you do have your, your light change and whether that's in the tent and you're going to 12 hours to darkness or 12 hours sunshine, or if you're outside, you're going to start to see the uh, little babies change and uh, you get your terpenes coming in. That's when I was talking about your bugs really like they, <laughs> They hone on in all the animals, buddy cows, kangaroos, cats. Like Your just, neighbors can start smelling it sometimes. I, yeah. I used to have the nosiest neighbor who would always stick his head over like just, and he'd pinch the buds too. Like it just like, oh. <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, just come on. Like get you get on your own. Like, come on. So yeah. So he always knew where that was happening, but it was really the animals that surprised me because I, they just they just came at it. I, I was shocked about how the kangaroos loved it. Even my my dog used to try and eat the tops off it, so I would always hide them. So I, I think it just smells great. So be aware of it. There's your animals, your neighbors. Uh, keep an eye out for bugs. And when it starts to change, its little leaves go a little bit yellow. So remove any of those. You're going to be keeping it tidy. That's why I like to have it in the lollipop, so you can really keep its skirt nice and clean. Okay, so your flowers are starting to develop. Um, during this time, these are some of your bugs that you should be watching out for. Your ladybugs are nice. They're sweet, but I tell you what, you need like a million to beat any. <laughs> you know when you see those jars of ladybugs? I'm like, that, that's not enough, dude. That's just not enough. So watch out for those ones. As I said, those caterpillars are just bloody horrible. Um, so you got your little flowers there. And during this time, I, I think this is a really cute, exciting time to me. They look like little pom-poms at first when the flowers start to come out. And they've got those little fluffy, fluffy, like little doo -doo -doos. So here we go here. Oh, look at those. Two. Those are nice. Okay. So when it's, when you're starting to get your buds coming in and I've jumped sort of going, because I know we're sort of running, running out of time here. Um, you get your buds coming in. They're starting to get nice and fluffy. You kept all your, your bugs off them. You're bug free. You're caterpillar free. Your neighbor hasn't even noticed them. Your cows haven't attacked them. They're looking bomb. And they're starting to change color. And they go from that looks like little sugar drops on the leaves. And they start to go that nice amber color. And you smell them around there and you can see these little hairs here start to turn your orange color so there's your pistol and your trichome colors and you're just keeping an eye out for those changing color um i always like i've got a little jeweler's loop just because it's cool to look at i mean up close <laughs> yeah so that's fun but you can do it by eye but you know if you've got a little magnifying glass or something like that it's it's just fun to to check them out when they start to you know change in this space okay so you're harvesting your plants so there you can either do it at the whole plant and you're cutting the whole bit down at the stalk and hanging her upside down or you can do it individually and the pros and cons of those ones are it's not all your buds are going to be ready at the same time when you take down the whole tree just like all your apples aren't ready at the same time on your apple tree um so that that's uh, you know a little bit of downfall there but it's done it's over and it's easy the other way you can do it individually but that does take time and depending on how much you got to go through well you know that can be a bit and i do like um there's your wet and your dry trimming too. Was that what you were talking about earlier when you're saying you enjoy trimming, like you just zoning out and, and trimming? Yeah. I love trimming <laughs> for like a couple of days and then I'm over it. But <laughs> Oh yeah. Like, but I do like, I love to when you like you'd first have them and like pull it off all the shade leaves and so sort of like just checking them out and being like to eyeball them. And, and I used to dry mine in cause Queensland's so humid. I used to dry them in, um, um cardboard boxes in between newspapers mm -hmm. i just get to go like every day and i'd sort of like rotate them like a little rotisserie chicken and just sort of check them out like yeah no more okay this one's good but i i haven't i have not been able to do it here not one single plant of really dry. all of them have i been able to and so i'll just say that 
basic rules of drawing. I, I can't follow any of them. But <laughs> so we've got our basic rules here, darling, and I might have to have you go through them because that is so bloody small in my eyes. I cannot see yeah. it there. Yeah, so how you dry and cure significantly impacts the quality of your flower. The preservation time, the potency, the flavor, and the smell, and the smoothness if you're smoking your flowers. Um, so what you're recommend, recommending is a dark ventilated space, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 45 to 55 degrees. 55% humidity, hanging the buds or layering them with newspapers, like you said, in a cardboard box and turning the buds over daily. Um, and some of our audience is saying they do the same thing. Um, 17 to 14 days to dry um, and that the stem should snap and not bend to indicate that they've been completely um, dried. Yeah, you can do with it with the buds, you know, like a, attached. I like to hear like a like you know what was that uh, rice crispy snap crackle pop? So like I like to do that. Like oh, you know. So I then I felt confident enough putting it into to my um, my bags. Um, mm -hmm. However, that as I said was in in Queensland where it was incredibly incredibly humid. So I would please recommend any anyone in California or um, yeah, just double check that. I could be just talking crazy there. So you're drying there. And then we're going into your curing. So drying is not curing. I mean, you, you've got it af afterwards, whether you're, um, I, I don't know if anyone's like a, a canner or, you know, like I, I love with all my veggies, you know, they taste better. Just, just sort of give them a while, you know, let them enjoy their little bath or whatever you've got them in brine or something or other. And the same with your cannabis. Like I, I find it's a smoother smoke if you're not and I mean I have smoked it kind of like the day after it's kind of been cut down or you got it in the oven and you're like just dry please you know it's smoking instantly however the longer you leave it the better it is going to smoke up for you and, and it's a nice smoother smoke so uh, keeping using your airtight containers your dark space um, the longer you cure, the better. And the burping is when you're opening the container and doing that exchange of gases uh, with your plastic bag, with your you know, the old sandwich bags. Um, but if you get classier and, and get nicer, you've kept all your old jars from previous buys. Those are great things to use. And yeah, just give them a little baby burp. And then we're going to keep on curing. And this is, I like to store my medicine in a nice, dark, cool place away from the animals. Don't let the animals eat it. I do like to check on it for mold. And as I said, this was something where I was dealing with a lot of humidity. I wish I had the, haven't got this far with the California bud. It's always looking terrible. I'm like, why? I can't even get it in the bag. So um, <laughs> continue to burp it. I uh, keep it away from the heat and the sunshine because that can affect your cannabis and your age does matter a tiny bit because as we know, uh, your old THC is your new uh, in there. So I, I mean, I know it's, I think, a new year here where your cannabis is um, best before, but I, I've, I've spent some all the weeds of that. So. And some people actually prefer, you know, um, their cannabis to be a little bit dated because they they do like a little bit of CB and they do like that more sedate high. I've actually um, I've had people actually ask for that the cured cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think as long as it still smells good, it's okay. You know, like you, I'm, and I I really did. I I I would get so excited about like watching like the little uh, you know bud sticks that I was curing. That I I really there was sometimes that I think even up to two years they were just really nicely cured and i had kept them in a really i kept them in my little shoe boxes so they they were happy chappies and uh and i could enjoy i could enjoy that smoke as opposed to you know when i was force feeding myself a little bit you taste still like you're taking smoking chlorophyll or something <laughs> so you know i i enjoy that one and yeah so well last slide here or second last one the three things that are we say to, to take home that that plants are so much fun to to grow i actually was uh, with a friend up in los angeles last week and i collected um not i not string of pearl succulents it was uh, something else but it's just gorgeous and now i've got them in all these mason jars that i had had grabbed and i thought well you know they're 
just just grow things just try and see what you can do you're gonna grab your mint from your beverage and and stick it in some water and see if it gets root so grow mm -hmm. something we we need bloody more green on this earth so do it um and it's fun um you get to practice so please practice and research research which is going to work for you how much space you have how much money you want to spend what you're going to be doing how much time you have available all of those things are going to be saving you money and um don't forget that plants do make the world a better place uh as i said it's just 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 fucking grow something you know enjoy it uh, go go play something go 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 see what happens go find an earthworm and and just enjoy the process and uh you know keep smiling because what else are you gonna do yeah and i think even if like you you know you don't want to like grow cannabis for, like to seriously like yield you know a large amount it's fun even just to have one in your house you know yeah the cannabis plant, like brings joy and it smells lovely and they're beautiful plants and she's and, such an expressive little, little lady like when she's happy her leaves kind of go like this and, and when she's sad she's got a little you know when and, and i mean not that i recommend doing this but you can leave her almost to die like i mean this saddest state like oh fuck i forgot her and come back give her a nice big drink and you know she'll she'll be right as rain i mean she's not probably going to give you the best buds later on because you've been mean to her but you know it's she's a wonderful wonderful plant to grow in and just just so fun like you said and she's you know and and this is something we're teamed up with with plant edge is oaksterdam it's got such you know there's so many cool courses that you can do there there's um you know there's i think this is a really fun book that i like to read there that that's got some really good information you've got so ed much available pardon is that ed rosenthal's book no it's dr rosemary spencer oh that's i haven't seen that one that one that looks really nice yeah and Ed Rosenthal's um I don't have it on me but he has a really good book too that Oaksterdam uses and it's a really good guidebook almost like the dictionary or guidebook for cannabis has a lot of great helpful information too that's a really good um resource Oaksterdam wonderful resource and it's excellent so when you grow your own medicine um, I'm going to launch another poll here for everybody to give some feedback. What do um, we get? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to see if I can yeah. see these. Just polls. starting yeah. off with having like one plant to bring you joy in your home to, like you said, just like starting out with like growing other types of plants to like getting, becoming more skilled to eventually like, you know, harvesting a good amount of medicine for yourself. It's very empowering and it's really yes. cool when you can actually, um, you know, have a crop share with your friends. Be like, I grew this. You want to try some? And yeah, share it? it is really cool. And that's what I mean. Even even like growing bloody carrots or something mm -hmm. like to pull it out of you know, it's like this is big. I'm not. I'm probably. But yes, to do that and then to be, but to be able to share your medicine, like when, or just oh, you know, it's. It's so cool, and I and I think that's really you know what the what cannabis does. I've always found it so exciting when I'm working with cannabis is that people are they want to teach you. They are so excited to give that information, to share that information, to share their really good bud that you know they smoked and it was this, and you know it smells like this, and and uh, yeah, I, I just think it's such a great plant. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, males when would you suggest people check for male cannabis plants and how do they do it okay i i with the male cannabis plants they they really do look like little balls uh, that come out there's these little tiny little tiny tiny little yellow flowers um if you're using clones you do not have to worry about that um feminized seeds are also available but the difference is the, the girls look like little white um, caterpillar hairs coming out and then the guys have little testicles <laughs> little. So like on the branch like where uh, on the stem where a branch um, is off is where yeah. you'll see that right yeah so if we were and it's he's my fake tree if we were talking about like just where these little i don't know if you can see that there just where the little no, sorry so they're hiding in there and you'll have your um I mean, if you are 
throwing a whole bunch of seeds out, you know, I would definitely be keeping an eye. It's a continual eye that you're you're always looking for it until you all have them sexed. Uh, But yeah, just that little area where you're kind of feel rude doing this. Like, (laughs) (laughs) just in this little area, you'll see these little little testicles coming out there and they're really pretty flowered too like I remember the first time because I did not know I was like oh what what is this like I didn't realize they had this sort of flower on it as well this these tiny tiny delicate little flowers that could just go everywhere and and, you know seed your plants and it kind of makes sense because like in nature the male is the more attractive sometimes of a species to attract a female so it has a flower kind of like so. it's really as i said it's just this tiny tiny little delicate flower but mm-hmm. uh yeah god once you nothing like when you're like chopping up one of your nice fat buds and you're like wait yeah well, but you want to get those you. those males out of there it's very important for new growers to understand that that although it may be painful to have to chop down three of your plants, especially when they've gotten a little bit further in the process. As soon as yeah. you identify that it's a male, you have to take it out. Otherwise, you do. All- but I mean, all is not lost. You use the, the use those leaves for you know your your smoothies or in your salads mm-hmm. or yeah. or do some you know like check them out like you know pull them up high. Use them as your little science project. Um, I have seen people who have uh, put like little hoodies over over the males, and and if they want to fertilize their females later on you know that might be something you can you can get crazy but you're right pull them out if you see them if you just want your nice buds with no seeds in them okay awesome um so somebody is asking a really good question um that mike i'm gonna try to say this micro micro is a symbi- symbiotic association between a fungus and a plant um, it refers to the role of a fungus in a plant's rhizophere, its root system. Um, it's a soil biology, and it's like soil chemistry. Have you ever heard of that? I thought it was very interesting. I, I'm really into, um, what was that show, that fan, Fantastic Fungi, when they, they yeah. and also when they talk about, like, trees talking to each other. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I, I'm totally into that. Whether I can can I do that in my own garden? God no. Like I haven't got the capability. <laughs> like I'm I'm digging soil and making my own compost and just sort of hoping for the best. It is the ultimate ultimate, you know, like up around and find out. It, it I do just throw seeds and and try things and see what pops up. But I mean, at the same time, plants are so cool. And yeah, and when you start looking about. I think it's trees on on Netflix. I mean, they're they're talking to each other. I don't mm-hmm. know what they're saying, but they're talking. Yeah, that's a really good question, Paul. Thank you for bringing that up. That that stokes my um, curiosity as well. So I'm going to learn more about that. Um, and another question is, um, do you use organic materials? Well, I think anything. Yes, yeah. When I'm using in my, I mean, I do like to go have a have a chat to the hydro stores. But as you know, when you're working with cannabis, you are very limited to what is available to be used in cannabis, anyways. Um, but yeah, when I'm I'm, I just really am throwing stuff out and trying. This is there's nothing serious happening in in my yard. So if I do have my compost and I'm and I you know maybe had a lot of bananas in there, I know oh okay maybe there's some potassium you know extra potassium in here. I do I don't know, but it's just sort of that fun experimenting that I'm doing and use as much organic as as possible because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm probably bad enough smoking, let alone I got to be good about what I'm putting in my lungs. <laughs> Love it. Um, and this is a great question to end on because it ties into what we got up on the screen here. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Plant Edge. I love what you guys do for us. And I know you guys work with some other um, great dispensaries as well, but happy with what you guys do with us. I love and appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. It's always so fun. (laughs) I I encourage everybody, like I said before, anybody that's, you know, close to any of the pottery, pharmacy, natural healing centers, please come and take advantage of their classes. I really love what they, what you guys do for us. So the question that I want to ask you is how are you guys' educational classes um, complimentary? um, And do you guys, how do you guys work for work with dispensaries um, how can dispensaries work with you? Um, and are the classes free for people to take too? 
Yeah, I mean, we just, we love people just to rock up and, and have a good time and listen and learn something. We really wanting to to educate the consumer and, and what's out there. So uh, you can contact us at, at Plant Edge there. Uh, Nick and Loeli, our founder is, as you know, she she's amazing and she's so passionate about really pushing that that education and uh that's why i love working with her is you get to meet so many great people like yourself we get to go to so many different places so yeah it is free to the public uh you know dispensaries aren't paying anything we just like to to help out and and to learn um you know from I guess all the new things that are coming out at the moment. And as you said, it's changing so quickly that I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. So this is something I've just been really, even though I love this plan for 30 something years, like I, I, what's what I'm learning now is just, yeah. you know, I didn't know anything before. I barely know anything now, but uh, you know, it was, yeah, so they're free. We just want you to come learn, have a good time, have a laugh with us. Get yourself a, a cup, a Plant Edge cup. <laughs> I think great Laura made these for us. Yeah, and Laura's amazing too. Um, and if everybody, if anybody wanted to watch the webinar that I've done with Loeli too, a Burgos, who's the founder, they can look in the YouTube library. And I did with one with her a couple months ago called Breaking the Stigma. Yeah. Um, you can meet and learn more about Loeli's story as well. She's an, a wonderful individual. Um, but yeah, definitely you can uh, scan this QR code, look up Plant Edge, get more information about the services that they have to provide. Um, yeah, this has been a really wonderful webinar. Um, Thank you like so much webinar. for having me. Yeah, this has been really wonderful. But like you said, there's so much to learn about cultivation. That's so why like, most books are like this thick, you know? Yeah, and I just want to touch on like, you know, the, the, as I said, our cultivation classes are, are silly and, you know, you just come and you have a laugh and, and it's, a, you know, you can get some clones, you know, maybe just to experiment on and, and enjoy and see whether you kill them or not, <laughs> because I mean, plants are going to die. So we, we got to learn a little bit and hopefully, you know, you guys have gone home with a little bit of information that might help you. Yeah. I think they're, they're probably leaving with a lot of information. Um, you've provided us with a lot to work with and a lot of, you know, good general information and it's almost spring. It's almost planting season. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for sharing us all all this information with us. Thank you to everybody at the Plant Edge team um, for all their contributions and making this possible. Um, and thank you to everybody today for watching this episode of Friends of the Farm Lecture Series. Uh, we hope that we were able to share some information that will help you become better informed cannabis consumers and that this information will help you find relief. Until the next episode, we look forward um, to seeing you. We hope you all stay well.